Good evening and Merry Christmas to everyone and welcome to the uh, December meeting of the uh, Health and Education Committee. And first order of business is to uh, vote on the minutes as submitted. Do I have a motion for that, please? So moved. Second. All in favor, if there's no discussion, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you very much. If Dr. Bullen is fine. That usually says that it's that one out of the way with no problem. <laughs> the minutes usually pass, don't they? <clears throat> Health uh, Department report. Ms. Gary, if you would come forward, please, and join us. And we uh, we do have a copy of your report. Anything un unusual? And give us a flu shot. To no, sir. Everything uh, very normal. We have been doing quite a bit of um, H1N1 vaccination. My last few reports, you've gotten to hear updates about this information. Um, as of last week, we had vaccinated over 10,000 people through our facilities, um, and that's quite a large amount in the amount of time we've been able to do that. And we've heard quite a few compliments from people being able to get in and now that it's open for everyone. So anyone who wishes to get the vaccine can now get it. Um, in December, we're, we did some open clinics at the beginning and now we're doing by appointment. So if anybody wants an appointment for um, H1N1, they can call 898-7878. And on uh, December 28th, that's when we're gonna start making appointments again. We just did an appointment day today. So I had 84 families come through today to, to get their vaccinations. Uh, there's also another phone number I'd like to give out. I've given this before, but just in case. 898-7880, extension 158. That's our hotline information. We update pretty regular about everything you need to know about H1N1 and flu vaccinations. Um, and you can call that directly. You don't have to wait or be on hold. You just call and it goes right into the recording. And I personally update that very regularly and keep the message up to date uh, so people can get current easy information that way how many how many has been reported to our health department that has gotten h1 i mean the n1 h1 h1n1 <laughs> how many have right. gotten the vaccination uh, no no oh. no have come down with it oh the numbers of when they're doing testing on h1n1 back in the spring when it first showed up everybody was culturing what they call culture mm -hmm. and we're sending that off to state labs and we were getting positives once you know it's there they really stop testing for it they just know it's flu it's here mm -hmm. um, so we just get general ref reports of flus and it's very average number of flu cases that we're seeing right now most of which we're assuming are h1n1 we're not seeing a lot of seasonal flu at this time mm -hmm. And they're just doing quick test, little swabs, so it's not for sure that it's H1N1, but that's how you do it epidemiologically. Testing is once you know it's there, there's no need to test every single person for it. So the numbers are very average for right now for what we would normally see in a flu season. You have um, two types of, of flu vaccines, I would assume, and. Uh, it's it's never too late to get these shots, is it? I mean, the flu season is really just yes, on us full that's time correct. now. That's correct. It's not too late. And in January, we'll start the mass clinics again. We've had Saturdays and late evenings, and we've tried to accommodate everyone's schedule that we possibly could. Uh, every day of the week we've had late, you know, to, in case Wednesdays weren't good or Tuesdays weren't good. Um, and we'll do that again in January. We'll do that again in February. and. All the way up through March, you can still see flu. Uh, we'll see a peak of it somewhere in mid-January. So, yeah, we haven't hit that point yet. So I do totally recommend that you still get your H1N1 vaccination. Any other questions for Ms. Garrett at all? Well, I'd like for her to comment on the school cafeterias. I've been going in them for years, and I find them to be extremely well uh, supervised, clean, and uh, much better than the reports that were in the newspaper the other day about cafeterias in other parts of the state and around the country. They're not even being supervised. I think ours are way above that. Would you agree to that? Um, yes, sir. We do regular inspections on the schools as well as part of our health department duties, uh, looking at food safety and, and that. 
and it has been very no problems at all noted. Um, the, also, the school has been very good with working with our health education department and with other community partners in trying to develop healthier foods, healthier choices, um, different people making a menu that's allergy friendly and safe for children. So yes, our school district has gone above and beyond trying to make sure that it's not only safe, but it's good choices as well. Okay, thank you. Yes. The economy has been blamed for, maybe blamed is the right word, um, for increased volume at both Smyrna and Murfreesboro yes, offices with that you, you still absolutely we've especially seen quite a bit in our Smyrna site um, if you can look at the numbers we've mm -hmm. really increased in our WIC program that's the women who fit children program and we're trying some new techniques in that clinic or our cl both clinics um, with something called group classes so that we can offer the service to a larger amount of people uh, at a time and that's helped give the benefit to more people and make the access to it easier by offering those groups and they've been a huge success and and that's part of why the number has gone up because we've been able to open up the doors more and also because there's just more people needing that service are the questions from miss garrett if if not i need a motion to approve the report in a second so moved second all in favor, please. If there's no discussion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Of course, there is none. Thank you, Ms. Garrett. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you guys. Thanks. Ms. Garrett, you want to save that for the Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, on, next on the agenda, the community uh, care report, and we're lucky enough, of course, to have a member, Ms. Cook, with us, and the chairman, Mr. Burgess, is, as always, is with us. And uh, any... <laughs> Any particular comment to either one of you? We're doing great. Well, enough said. <laughs> that summarizes it well. Most of the further report. <laughs> I like, <laughs> like y'all's style. All in favor, please say aye. Uh, uh, here we go. Miss Jolly. Community <laughs> care reports approved. Miss Jolly will. Uh, can you make your short short? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I sure can. Be going over the uh, uh, school building special projects report, and we've had this for. Uh, about 10 days now, so uh, we've had a chance to look at it. It is, as always, fascinating, Ms. Jolly, this report. Beautiful job. <laughs> Comments? Um, I guess you noticed on this one, I've done all the changes that y'all approved in the commission meeting in October. I've reduced Rockville Middle's uh, amended budget by 104, 294. The 2006 repairs by 20,193. This is on page four. Um, on page five, we've reduced Brown Chapel to an eighty-seven thousand oh forty. Christiana Elementary renovation has been reduced nineteen eight twenty. Uh, Buchanan renovation by one ten. Oakland Middle, we've increased their budget due to the shortfall by six thirty-four six thirty-two. And Whitworth Buchanan, we've increased by five thirty-two three eighty-six. And on page seven, we that uh, future high school has been all that money has been committed away. Mm -hmm. no. Give you a name two to look at that. Although I know you've already looked at it, are there are there questions for Miss Jolly and also the director of schools is here, of course, and Mr. Sandvig is here as well. Just a word, I was not, just on the side you mentioned it here, I was not in town when Brown's Chapel opened, which is, um, I know many of you went, and I since toured it, and oh, it is, it is really a terrific place. <laughs> I mean, uh, those, those youngsters there, there are many of our schools, but that's the most recent one that we've opened, and it is, if you haven't been out there, you ought to go out. To Steve, Willie, uh, gave us the first class tour and it is it is beautiful any questions so. since you mentioned brown chapel yes. i don't know if this is for miss jolly or for the director but uh, uh are we done with the step system out there i know there was holdups on it and we're gonna have to uh, yeah, pump for a little while and so is all that up and complete yes. now and yeah. any other questions comments if not need a motion to approve 
Mr. Cook, thank you. Second? Second. Comments, discussions? If not, please approve the report by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? None. Merry Christmas, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. You did good. <laughs> As usual. Uh, Mr. Sandvig and uh, Director Gill, if you all would come on up. I believe we have uh, one uh, capital project report here, the amendment to discuss. And I don't have that. Welcome to you both, Mr. Sandvig. Uh, enlighten us here on Fund 177 Amendment, please. Uh, in Fund 177 Major Capital Projects, the three projects include the 0809 budget for Fund 177 and not been completed as of June 30, 2009. This amendment takes $427,144 from Fund 177 fund balance and budget it to line item and functions 91300 education capital projects. Most of the funds will go to maintenance or repair services for buildings. Uh, this $427,144 is needed to fund the completion of the following three projects. <coughs> John Colby renovation, $385,144. Smyrna High Roof, $20,128. Christiana Elementary Roof, $21,872, which totals $427,144. Uh, these are not new funds, $650,748 and unexpended budgeted funds went to fund balance on July the 1st and 427-144 needs to be rebudgeted. The $223,604 difference that remains in fund balance is the savings of last year's projects and we're obviously recommended that you amend $427,144 to fund 177 fund balance and budget it to object codes as presented in function 91300 education capital projects. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Dr. Bullen and Ms. Cook have moved and seconded. Do we have any uh, comments, questions for the director or Mr. Sandvig? <coughs> if not, oh, whoop, got a call roll. Thank you, Jeff. That's why you make the big money. Commissioner Bullen? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Will Jordan? Yes. Commissioner McAdoo? Yes. Commissioner Jordan? Yes. Thank you, keeping me on the ball here. Okay, um, I want to thank the mayor for the material. I hope you got the material from the uh, high school magnet uh, development timeline that he was kind enough, said he would provide, and it was in my box at least the next day. Also, I did provide you um, last week, I guess, uh, Central Academic Magnet School. Uh, now it's just Central Magnet School uh, information that Mr. Ash is, uh, I assume, handing out all over the county. I guess I got mine at Thurman Francis, but at any rate, uh, there you go. And uh, I, you all ask uh, for Mr. Gill to come and visit with us about uh, uh, Central Magnet and its athletic program. And he, was, I'm, I'm not being um, uh, trying to be flippant here. He was eager to do that and said he would meet any time. And I don't know if he met tonight or not, but he's here. So <laughs> we agreed on the night. So Mr. Gill is with us. And if you have questions, he is ready to answer them, I hope. If anybody in the community wishes to ask Mr. Gill a question, this would be a good time. Yes. <laughs> Will you explain the athletic program that we plan on having at Central Middle? Yeah, well, it's obviously somewhat supply and demand. You know, if there's enough interest in any, any TWSAA sport, with the exception of football or wrestling, uh, we hope, hope to offer it. Uh, and I'll get back to that in a second, but there's a, uh, you know, we, what we, we never intended to offer wrestling or football. Uh, one, didn't think there'd be enough kids to participate. Secondly, facilities would have been an issue. And the TWSAA had a rule that stated that if kids want to go to a particular school and they don't offer that sport, you had to dedicate a site for them to go play. For example, if the magnet, uh, Central Magnet School 
was made up of kids from Smyrna High, you know, if some were from Smyrna High, Laverne, mm -hmm. Blackman, Oakland, Riverdale, Eagleville, uh, they couldn't go back to their home school and participate in football. And the board wasn't, uh, as you might understand, real interested in dedicating the site. You know, for example, we didn't want to say, well, okay, they all go to Oakland or they all go to Riverdale uh, for obvious reasons. So we petitioned the TWSAA to change the rule, and uh, sadly they didn't. Uh, so I don't know if we'll. Off, I don't. I don't know if we'll. Uh, if the board will dedicate a site, or whether they'll just say we're just not going to let anybody go there play football or wrestling. So you know, I, I kind of think that's what will ultimately happen. So anyway, you'll have uh, provided there are enough student uh, student athletes. You know, you'll have your basketball girls and boys. You'd probably have soccer. Uh, you'd have uh, volleyball, you'd have, uh, golly, there's so many sports now, I can't remember. Baseball and basketball. Baseball, softball, track, uh, cross country, I think that you'll have them all if there's enough interest. Uh, I think the expense will be minimal with respect to the facilities. You know, obviously we've got a gym. Uh, they play baseball down the road at, uh, what is it, Oakland Park? Oakland Park. Uh, there's a soccer field out there. We may have to buy some bleachers, uh, you know, some uh, aluminum bleachers, which would be minimal. But uh, startup fee would be comparable, I would think, to what we pay at the middle school. The new middle schools, you know, we'll buy them uniforms. Uh, you know, if there's any equipment associated with it, we would buy that since it's a, since it's a new sport. Now they may be able to use some of what Central currently has. Uh, but I mean, I think the board and I certainly felt like. We needed to offer those kind of programs. Uh, you know, we try to develop a well-rounded student. We also want to have, uh, you know, extracurricular academic programs uh, that would accommodate those kids' needs too. So uh, that's kind of been our been our mindset on that. When did the mindset change? Because about three years ago, I believe in this very room, you told me. I believe during a meeting <coughs> there was going to be token athletics. I remember there. Were, something similar to intramural. I remember the term token athletics because that was one of the things that were more or less appeasing it to the other principals that they were still going to keep their, you know, a lot of the real sharp academic kids are also, also athletes and, and those kids that wanted to play athletic, athletics were still going to be going to their sequels, Oakland, Riverdale's and all. And, and I remember that being said. It might have been as long as four years ago or something, but, but and, uh, and, and now we have change gears somewhere in here and, and and I believe Commissioner McAdoo remembers somewhat like I do and and our question last month or two months ago whenever Dr. Ash was here but when did it change because I, I token athletics to me did not include you know that was just gonna be like gym basically or something you know and yeah, because I see a span. You want me to answer that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get around First to it. First of all, I'm sure you've got a be better memory than I do. You're certainly considerably younger, but uh, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't remember saying that, but I, I probably did, or we may have considered it at the time. I don't think four years ago we really uh, had decided on exactly what we were going to do. If you recall, you may have been on it too. We created a committee of local business leaders, uh, one or two former commissioners, people from the general public, and uh, come, came up with kind of a mindset for, you know, how we were going to, what the, what the MO of the school was going to be. Now, I know, and, and the mayor produced it at the last meeting, I know we put out a document two and a half, three years ago that basically referenced what sports we would have. Uh, and if I misled you or said that, you know, I apologize, but, uh, I mean, I think we're certainly doing the right thing by offering those sports to school. Uh, and I think if we didn't, I'm sure a lot of the kids that uh, might go there uh, may not go there. Also, might I was reading, uh, it's pretty interesting, we had a discussion. Uh, I, you may have known this last year, I had the privilege of flying with the Blue Angels, which was really a mistake. It took me about six to eight hours to recuperate. Uh, <laughs> but I was reading some of the bios today on these guys and ladies that performed. And almost every one of them had some kind of athletic background, each of whom went to, you know, prestige, you know, Navy or Wake Forest or other uh, advanced academic schools. And almost to the T, each one of them participates in some kind of program. And I thought, 
you know, obviously, had they had not had those, it may not have attracted that caliber kid they may, or student. They may have gone somewhere else. So I think we're doing the right thing by doing it. I don't have any question. And uh, again, if I misled you, I'm certainly sorry. I would just have the impression at the time that's how you were selling it to the other principal. Because I actually talked to one of the principals I don't want to name, and he said, well, you know, he, he's the same type of situation. He said, a lot of these really sharp kids are athletes, and I'll still get them because they're not going to offer athletics at this school. And he wasn't going to fight the school because the principals, they don't want to lose their best kids, and you can't blame them. You know, you go to, you go to Oakland, and Bill Spurlock's going to tell you how great the IB program is, but you go to Siegel, and Kenny Nolan's going to tell you how they've got advanced honors classes of, compete with anybody and they don't want to lose those sure. top producing kids and I think or I took it myself and, and the principal I talked to said that was why he wasn't going to be against the magnet school because he knew they were still going to get those athletes and they were going to you know hold have a good hold on some of those real sharp kids and uh, and things have changed and I haven't talked to this person in a couple of years and they, they may not be upset about it but that's, that's what I because at one point in time that was a stumbling block in years past, talking about a, a magnet high school, these principals were ready to fight because they didn't want to lose those best kids. Yeah, yeah it, but I can assure you this, that I've talked to the high school principals more than once, I've never told them mm -hmm. that. Now, I may have said it around you and maybe Commissioner McAdoo may have heard me say that. I, you know, I don't recall saying it, mm -hmm. but I will say this, I know they want to retain their best kids, but I don't want that to be a hurt, uh, a stumbling block for offering opportunities to kids. I mean, kids. I mean, I think the magnet school will offer them some opportunities. Maybe they couldn't get at those high schools too, even though those high schools have, you know, advanced place program, accelerated curriculums in some areas. But uh, you know, they want to hang on to those kids. But at the end of the day, our responsibility for education is to provide the best opportunity we can for all kids across the county. I think this provides a tremendous opportunity for them. So, any of those guys got their feelings hurt. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> well, I may be an overly optimistic person, but I believe they're going to be beating the doors down and get in Central with or without athletics. And I believe you're probably going to turn down three times as many as you can admit. There's a and, lot of interest. You're right. And, uh, and, and so that's, I believe it's going to be full. Mr. Yeah. Cook? I know I have talked to you several times about a magnet school in the north end of the county. And I said without a football team and such as that. But the word come back to me, and I won't say that you told me, I don't know just who told me, that the state required us to have a gym and to have some gym sports. Now, am I right on yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. That's part and, of the and that, curriculum of graduates. Yeah, and, you, and we talked about we wouldn't have to have the outside courts, whether it was tennis, where it was uh, football or volleyball. Well, we have volleyball in, in gym. Or you, you understand what sure, I'm saying there. Sure. But that's the way I understood it. That the state required us to have a gym and have gym sports. Yeah, well, with respect to graduating from school and earning a diploma, you have to have, I think it's a year 20. and a half of physical education mm -hmm. now, and obviously your peak year gym is where you're going to earn part of that credit. We also have, have health and wellness because the and, associated and with that goes years back. I was required in the state of Florida to take gym. <coughs> Still are. Yeah, yeah, and I don't like it. <laughs> but, you know, there, and we didn't have a football team, but we had a basketball team. It was state. But that's what I was looking at this here. A lot of these could be gym sports. You understand why I'm calling it gym sports, not out, outdoors. Yeah, and a lot of those will be played in gym just mm -hmm. for, you know, uh, as part of the part of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. uh, but with respect to competitive sports, uh, but you got tennis and softball and soccer here, golf, cross country, then cheerleading, bowling, basketball, wrestling, volleyball on this list. Yes, ma'am. I mean, I, obviously, I feel they're important. The principal does, and I think the kids that go there feel they're important. You know, we got those at Eagleville. We got them at Smyrna, Laverne, Oakland, Blackman, every high school we got. And virtually have the same sports at every middle school we got. Again, why shouldn't the guys, and why shouldn't the students that go to Central Magnet School have the same opportunities that students go elsewhere? I think they should have more of an opportunity in the science and the, and the academics like that. I think they should be more than 
just sports. <laughs> I think it should be a higher level. Oh, it is. It will be. You understand what I'm saying yes, with that? It will be. Of course, your sports take place once that bell rings, you know, after school is mm -hmm. when they'll do their practice and conduct their activities. But, yeah, during the day, it's going to be a very rigid, very strenuous curriculum. And we hope to really push and challenge those guys. I was just thinking during this discussion, Mr. Gill, we also were talking two different concepts early on. We were talking the possibility of a K-12 magnet at Central, and that may have been more when the discussion on, because we had such smaller classes, that may have been the discussion that was going along with truly limiting the athletics there. Well, when I was involved in it, we had the idea, when we had that committee, mm -hmm. that we could do some things that the TSSAA said we couldn't do. You know, like you brought up. I think we talked about sports, and then we say, oh, we can just let them go back to the different schools and whatnot. But we didn't have that TSSAA ruling at the time. So you explained it to me right. why we had to change. Because originally, we were going to do exactly what you said. Just let them go back right. and play. But uh, I understand why TSSAA ruling. I don't, I don't like the rule, don't, don't understand it either. It I don't sense. understand it either, but, but uh, we have to go by what they say. Anyway, saying. we went for a committee of about 20 and made our best pitch, and yeah. took them about 15 minutes to decide our pitch wouldn't <laughs> didn't have much muster to it. Uh, Director Gill, I wonder how they decided in Nashville, Martin Luther King and, uh, and Hume Fogg. I, I believe they picked Pearl Cone and Hillwood as the what do they call them? The designated schools or something like that? A des I believe a designated <laughs> site. How did they, they decide? It's left up to the local uh, LEA, uh, Education Association, which means the school board. Hmm. Of course, school board's not really interested. Well, I'm sure they want to vote on that. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're going to make five or six other principals mad when you say that. Right, you know, <laughs> when that one gets them. And, you know, I mean, the, the discussion was that if, if they did that, uh, you're talking about a mechanism for recruiting. Mm -hmm. You know, you go down to Smyrna and LeBron and say, hey guys, come on down here, you, you get in our school and you come over to Oakland and play or Riverdale. Not that we have anybody that would do that. <laughs> but well, several years ago. I've heard that we did. Several years ago, they did. Yes. <laughs> Look. What does AP stand for here? Advanced placement. Advanced? Advanced placement. What is that? Well, it's they basically didn't have that a college. Harder when you went to school. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, no, we were out in the country. We didn't have that. We didn't have abbreviations. <laughs> it's a college board course that uh, students can take if they test out. They can earn credit for college. Okay. And it's extremely mm -hmm. tough. Well, I, I can see that every youngster in the county we were providing transportation i believe from the northern part of the county to to central just like we used to provide for the for the air force we had plenty of air force youngsters at central high school because uh, they took a bus every day so and, and you're providing that i didn't know that oh yeah i thought we had them all at central i mean smart at yeah, the time because we had the best school in the county back then, right, had the well, i can assure you we had plenty <laughs> y'all must have had to deal not so good yeah. students. <laughs> but anyway, you're going to be provided that so a student could test into there. Absolutely. So it, I'm just making a point here. If you're going to, I don't believe the school board is going to, maybe they will, but I don't believe they're going to pick a school. Not not just go around that board and vote. I, I, I certainly, I wouldn't want anything to do with that. Yeah. So you're going to have to do it neutrally, which means you're going to have to draw it out of the hat. Something. You're going to have to do something. Either that or not do it at all. Or not do it at all. Yeah, which, which is... Well, you know, I guess the silver lining might be like Commissioner Jordan said, that, you know, these schools do have good programs and, you know, if there's a kid that wants to play football bad enough he'll, and we don't designate a site, I presume he'll stay there and, and, you know, hunker down and take those advanced placement courses to school and play football or wrestle there. But, uh, yeah, and, and Dr. Maybe Ash told me the other day there's a lot of, there's been a, there's been a tremendous amount of interest throughout the county. Uh, mm -hmm. Which may you know, kind of validates what you said. Whether you do or don't have sports, they still probably would go. Uh, but from my perspective, it's not the issue. I just think that they'll have opportunities. Yeah. But anyway, I think we're—I don't think we're having a hard time filling it up. Other questions for the director? Uh, I got one question. Uh, 
Macfadden. In the future, are we looking at making it an alternative school if we get K through 12 is at a um, magnet school over there? Is that still on the No, it's, it's, it's kind of off the table right now. Off the table. Uh, I think the magnet high school will have, I don't have the numbers in front of me, maybe Mayor Burgess does, somewhere around 11 or 1200 when it's full. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, thank you. And uh, <coughs> McFadden will have what uh, we probably still have with what six grades over there, K five will still have probably as many as four to five hundred over there, I would think. If we expand to three, well, probably smaller class size, It'd be a little so, small. Yeah, uh, but we're going to need another alternative school at some mm -hmm. point. Yeah, uh, I know that was yeah discussed, and, and I had thought that at one time converting that, but mm -hmm. and making it a K twelve, but it just never got uh, another word. Nashville has two, didn't they? Two what magnet schools. Right, they got you involved in. Uh, oh, the has got sixteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> and we've got two alternative schools, each of which will house. I mean, at Myrna West, a little over a hundred. Yeah, that name of King, a little over. They got four or five portables, and they're both they stay full. Yeah, they packed about that Daniel McKee, I know that. Yeah. Now this Operation Integrity is helping some mm -hmm. because they are, you know, it's kind of a a last step before going to the alternative school and I think it uh, we've got it two places and considering having it in Rockville Middle too. So that's probably uh, more than off 10 or 12 that might go to the alternative school which is extremely helpful. But I think someday you guys will be faced with figuring out where to put another alternative school. Any other questions? We have nothing to vote on here. We're just the information gathering. Well, make a quick comment, since we had the health report, make a quick comment about what all you've done in the schools to try to fight the flu epidemic. I know that you've taken all kind of measures, and we ought to mention that to the public this time. Well, yeah, I mean, we set, uh, first of all, we used our messenger system to uh, more than once to advise parents about what precautions they could take to uh, uh, minimize chance for their kid to get uh, H1N1 or even a seasonal flu. Uh, we've stayed uh, uh, up to date on every CDC uh, recommendation. We bought supplies so that uh, desks could be wiped. Uh, the big deal was hand sanitizers. Anyone that had any signs was required to go the, to the nurse to be checked out if there's a fever. Uh, we instantly kind of you know, without, we don't want to humiliate anybody, but they were put over so that they couldn't, you know, spread the germ. I think we had uh, every employee in the county was kind of coached with respect to what to look for, you know, uh, you know what their responsibilities were. And I just think we did a good job uh, uh, preparing and, get, uh, and, and educating people with regards to how to, how to minimize the spread. I think uh, early on we had, there were a few days that we had maybe 70, 80, 85 cases of the flu, but it's dropped back to now 10, 15 cases. You know, when you consider you've got 39, 38,000 kids, it's pretty solid. Yeah, what we, about uh, problems that some other schools have had with athletic teams? Uh, you tried to hit that off by dealing with the locker rooms and we showers? Did, uh, and yeah, if you remember, we had the uh, MRSA school scare uh, about two years ago and we we uh, we put in the uh, there's some kind of alcohol based product that you could put in uh, in the ventilation system that sprays on a, on a on a pretty regular basis that minimizes the spread of MRSA also we, we met twice with the coaches and the principals and went over you know how you treat it what kind of products work uh, you know, stuff with bleach in it. The CDC calling you right now. I'm not paying enough yeah. We'll forgive you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll let you slide. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's my but, but we, Christmas. we took precautions <laughs> and I think made a difference there too. A big difference. Appreciate yeah. you bringing that up. Made a big difference. I think so. There you go. I don't, I don't want to say what, it, now, what was that? <laughs> she left the message. She left the message. <laughs> 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 
you, you keep it up, you're going to be home full time. <laughs> Oh, any other any other questions from the director? No, oh, Mr. Sandy. Any 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 other comments? Whatever? No. Appreciate it. Thank yes, you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate right. you both very much. The director have an all commitment now for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about next Christmas? <laughs> right. Any other business to come before the committee? Other than a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Anything else? Uh, we are adjourned. Uh, all right. Thank you. Thank you all very much.